वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल टूडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग द चैप्टर सिक्स ऑफ नाइन जोग्राफी एन सी आर टी विच इज कॉल्ड पॉपुलेशन एंड इट ऑल्सो हैज थ्री पार्ट्स दिस इज पार्ट वन सो यू मस्ट बी थिंकिंग दैट वाई पॉपुलेशन एज अ चैप्टर इज इंक्लूडेड इन जोग्राफी इट कुड हैव बीन इंक्लूडेड से इन इकनॉमिक्स सो वाई should we study population and geography that's the first point in my notes so my answer to this question is when we talk about geography we talk about natural resources and how we use those natural resources for economic benefit and uh, how different types of resources which are present are manipulated time and again so that means that human beings have a very important role to play in the production and the consumption of earth resources so any understanding of geography would be incomplete without understanding the nature of human population itself say a place like rajasthan so to know that why people have lot of business of marble over there you need to know also the composition of population or the composition of people staying over there so human beings are the producers and consumers of earth's resources hence the understanding of population is very important for geography second point in this chapter basically um so what we see is there are three major questions of nature about population the first one is population size and distribution this chapter or this part will deal over here and the second part is population growth and processes of population change why does population grow what are the reasons behind the growth or the decline in population and what are the processes that lead to change the third is the characteristics or qualities of the population for instance it is a aged population or it is a youthful population it is a literate population it is a female oriented population so what is the characteristics so we talk about the quantity or the number and the quality of population and how the quantity and the quality changes so this section is very important it is little bit numerical you don't have to mug everything up but then yes you better have an idea about it so point number 3 is population size and distribution in your book we talk about the book talks about census 2001 but as the latest census was carried on or published in 2011 the data that i would be giving here would mostly be from 2011 and it is better you update your data in the ncert book it will always fetch you more marks so now that i have talked about census what is census census is nothing but enumeration of population done periodically which means that a vast country like india with so many states and districts and blocks and villages so it will take lot of time to find a proper enumeration of it we can't do it like in every one year or every two year so a 10 year gap is easy for administrative convenience and it will also register the actual growth you know a significant growth or decline or whatever so census is nothing but enumeration of population done periodically in indian context it is done every 10 years so for the one that is mentioned in your book is about 2001 after 10 years 2011 census has come out so the first census um, that was there was in 1872 so it is not a very new phenomena but you need to remember that the first complete census came in 1881 present population as per 2011 census is 1.22 billion in the ncert book it is talked about 2001 census you can easily update it 1.22 billion the most populated state or union territory over here is uttar pradesh in 2001 census also it was the most populated and so is the case in 2011 and the least populated is sikkim both in 2001 and 2011 census so if you see interestingly 
not that this 1.22 billion people are equally divided among all the 29 states that we have. In reality, half of the population or the majority of this 1.22 billion people are staying in the states of Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Bihar, West Bengal and Andhra Pradesh. We will definitely find out the reason that why majority of the people stay in these areas and why very few people stay in say the northeast region or the seven sisters like Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, Tripura. Why do people prefer to stay in Delhi or Bangalore and not in those areas? We will discuss it later. Rajasthan area wise is the largest state in the country area wise but it only has 5 percent population so if you just apply a little bit of common sense you would understand that who would want to stay in a desert scarcity of water no rainfall so obviously farmers are not going to prefer a place like Rajasthan they would shift say to Uttar Pradesh or Maharashtra or Bihar where there is fertile soil sufficient water so Rajasthan despite being such a huge state there is only 5% of population staying there because of inconvenience or um, not so conducive environment or geographical factors. The next point that we should remember is popu about population density. So, what is population? Nothing, just number of people in the area. So, if you are talking about human beings, then human population is number of human beings in that area. Total number of human beings, if you are talking about say dogs, then total number of dogs in that area or in that territory. But what is population density? So, population density is number of persons per unit area. So, we are not seeing how many people stay in the state as a whole, but we are seeing number of people staying in unit area. So, it shows that say a state like Odisha, number of people staying in unit area for Bhubaneswar will be very much more than say Sambalpur or uh, say a village uh, called Narsingpur. Because there is lot of facility available in Bhubaneswar, so more people will stay there. If more people will stay there, land will be more costly, rent will be more costly, but facilities will be there. Similarly, if you take the example of Andhra Pradesh, majority of the people want to migrate to Hyderabad and stay there because of all the facilities that they get in Hyderabad. So, the density of population in Hyderabad will always be more than say the density of population in Guntur district, right? Country wise if you see India has high density of population that means we not only have a big geographical territory but we have lot of people staying in that big geographical territory. To compare we can see Russia, Russia is so huge but majority of the people stay near Moscow. There are places of Russia where people do not even visit, nobody stays in those area but the country is so huge. Density wise Bangladesh and Japan are above India which means that in Japan and Bangladesh more people stay in the same amount of area. Okay, So, the question that we dealt over here that why Rajasthan despite being area wise so big only 5% of the population stays there or why people do not stay in Sikkim and people prefer Uttar Pradesh. So, the answer we will do here. So, why sparse population in certain areas? So, the answer is there is not conducive environment for people to stay. For instance, rugged terrain. So, if the terrain or the land is not fertile, it is very rocky, people avoid such places because it will be very difficult to transport, to communicate and it will be very difficult for developmental projects to be set up in that area. So, people want fertile land where they can go for agriculture, where they can move around freely, where transportation is easy. Unfavorable climatic conditions. For instance, I give you an option to stay in Maharashtra or Rajasthan or Kashmir. One would prefer Maharashtra because it has more balanced climate or perhaps Bangalore in Karnataka. But staying in Rajasthan is an extreme climate or Jammu Kashmir is extremely extreme climate. So, unfavorable climatic conditions also, you know, 
dissuades people from staying in a particular place. So, if you see an example over here, Northern Plains, UP, Bihar, all those areas and Kerala have more amount of population because they are flat plains, they are fertile soil and abundant rainfall. So, you should remember when people decide to stay in a particular place, they also think about the economic viability. So, if they stay there, can they earn money? Can they eat food? Can they grow their crops? Can they buy things? Can they transport each other? So, that is a very important point. Next is why there is less population say in Assam or Sikkim because those are very isolated areas not properly communicated. Now, why they are not properly connected? Reason is hilly and dissected and rocky terrain, moderate to low rainfall, shallow and less fertile soils. So, obviously people would prefer more fertility, more you know conducive geographical environment. So, as we saw geography, population are very much related. You must have studied about Indus Valley civilization in your ancient history classes. So, over there now we can ask that why people the earliest settlement you know was found near rivers like Indus and the, the five tributaries of Indus, Satlej, Indus, B.S., Ravi. The reason is because those land must be fertile because the river is passing through. So, the soil will be fertile and it would be conducive for growth, agricultural growth. So, this is part one. Part two we will do in the next video.